Welcome to this week's episode of The Better Half. I'm Kendra D. St. Alvin, and this is Katie Hartley. And we're going to take a look back at some of the things that have been going on this week. We won't spend too long recapping the Cardinals-Steelers game since they lost again 32-20. to But let's focus a little bit more on something specific, the running game of the Arizona Cardinals. And we'll, we'll, look, we'll focus on Beanie Wells. Kendra, what do you think of Beanie Wells so far? He's gotten a bad rap for being injury prone this year. What do you think? Well, I think that the assessment is actually pretty accurate. I know that he's only missed about two total games this season. In, in his first season in 2009, he had 16 games that he did play in. But he's always got these little nicks and bumps and bruises that it seems like most running backs in the league, or a good majority of them, the ones that are first-round draft picks, play through. For some reason, it's like, oh, he's got a, a bone bruise. He's got a swelled-up knee. He's got this. So either they're not telling us the truth and he's more injured then they're telling us, and that's why, and he's getting the bad rap because everyone's saying he's injury prone, or he's just not the kind of guy that can play through injuries. And Mark May, he's talked about that when he came out of college, when he came out of Ohio State, that this guy is not going to be healthy. When he is healthy, he averages almost four years, yards or about four yards per carry, mm -hmm. so we know that he can get the job done when he's healthy, but he just doesn't seem like the kind of guy, in my opinion, that plays through injuries. Right, and he's got six touchdowns this season and, and 15 for his career. And I just think that he's getting a bad rap for this, this injury thing because of the team that he plays on. And it's so obvious when he's injured and he's not in the game because other than Larry Fitzgerald at wide receiver, there's not a lot of other big names on this team or impact players. And I really think that that's kind of the, the main problem with Beanie Wells. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the injury-prone title is somewhat accurate in the fact that he wasn't actually named officially the starting running back until this year when Hightower had to leave. And if Ryan Williams was here, would Beanie Wells be the starter? I mean, I guess we won't know until next year when they're both back and maybe both healthy. Right. Well, I think we both hope that the Cardinals can at least turn it around this season. Another player making the news this week is Terrell Owens as he is looking for an NFL team to play for, to come back from an injury and play for. Uh, his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, was on Mike and Mike this morning, so let's take a listen. My phone can ring, and all it takes is one general manager, one head coach, one quarterback, one personnel director to say, you know what, hey, I want to win football games, and this player can help me win football games. Good stuff from Drew Rosenhaus. He is fired up. He just says that he wanted to impress just one general manager, just one team with this workout that, of course, no team showed up to. Well, and it looks like maybe he did attract one team. It just happens to be an AFL team. <laughs> well, you know, maybe he's, he's signing with Chicago. We're not sure, but that's maybe one offer that's out there. Okay, first of all, Drew Rosenhaus, best of all salesmen. I give him all the credit in the world as being one of the best agents in the world, and especially at this time. There is no doubt about that. But personally, I think T.O. is washed up. He's 37 years old. He's coming off ACL surgery, which he just had in April. That's just only about six months as far as recovery time. And, and, I, and I think it's telling that not a single team even sent a lackey, some guy low on the totem pole, to see this guy's workout in person. Yeah, we have all the media, and we can watch it on TV, but there has not been a single workout where a, a, a personnel person has not shown up to all the other guys that are trying to sign with the team. So I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, no one sent a single person to see this guy and see if it was for real. I think that is really telling that no one took the time but and energy and money I to do that. I think Terrell Owens is for real. I don't think teams need to send anybody to take a look at his workout. He's been in the league for 15 years. We already know. I mean, he's got almost 16,000 yards. Like That's true. We career. know that he's washed up and old. No, he's 37. We, he's still he had good. ACL surgery, no. and there is no chance. Last year with the Bengals, he had 10 receptions, 222 yards, and a touchdown in a game last year. This guy is not washed up yet. But he had ACL surgery. That is huge. That makes that is a big deal. Also, the first time he's been on the injury reserve in 15 years. I think he's going to bounce back. I think he looks great I think at he's the in workout. Trouble. <laughs> we'll have to create a bet on this at some later point. We'll see. <laughs> um, so some baseball news. Of course, the World Series happening. And um, we'll start with the Tony La Russa and the bullpen blunder. Yikes, how do you bounce back from this? Okay, first of all, it's hilarious to me, and I love that it happened to Tony La Russa calling the bullpen <laughs> because he calls the bullpen 75 times a game. So the fact that he calls and there's this whole miscommunication, what a joke. Mott and, Z and Zepchinski sound nothing alike. So there couldn't <laughs> have been a miscommunication there. And if the bullpen phone's not working, send someone to run down there. 
That's all I have to say. Do you th do you think that this is going to cost the Cardinals the World Series? I don't think it'll cost them the World Series, but I just think it's hilarious. It's just fun to watch. It's entertaining. And how about Albert Pujols um, taking the reins and making some calls, saying, I am calling for a hit and run, and saying in the seventh inning, calling Alan Craig to run to second as he – uh, as he said, he'll swing through and doesn't, and, didn't. and he gets thrown out at second. The best part about that was the conversation in the bullpen that happened. You know, you could see Larusa talking to Craig, like, "Okay, what, what, what was the deal there?" And everyone was giving Craig and Larusa harping on them. What a bad decision! Pools at the plate. You never try to steal a base when he's at the plate. And then to come to find out, he called the hit and run. And Larusa was like, "Oh, I'm just glad I didn't call it." I mean, he, I, I thought it was hilarious. I just love watching blunders like that, especially because I'm not a fan of either team, like you are. Right. So, I, I, to me, it's just pure entertainment at well, this point. Mass confusion. Good stuff for us to talk about. Hopefully, we have good stuff next week as well. Join us uh, for another episode of the Better Half next week. Until then, you can follow her on Twitter at Kendra620. Follow me at FunKatie620, and we'll see you next week for the Better Half.